Well, hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. Just approaching a freeway here and there's an interchange. So I'm hoping to slide into a green space here between the freeway and a slip lane and camp for the night. It is about rush hour right now, so traffic is fairly relentless, but there should be a break because there's a set of lights up ahead. And then we'll just dart across this slip lane and set up in the trees over there. Should have a break in traffic any moment soon here. Yep, let's go. Okay. And. Listen, listen, I see you guys all asking questions about the body bag. How do you even get a body bag? Is it really a body bag? Is it a used body bag? I have no idea. I've not seen this at all. I, I have all these questions with you guys. How, listen. How the fuck did this guy get a body bag? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is it really going to be a body bag? Has he just made something that's like a body bag? I don't know. It it looked like one in the thumbnail. Okay. So, just going to stop right in here for the moment. And perfect. I'm I think I'm pretty well hidden right here. But uh this is just the first stop. I'm gonna get this backpack off. And uh, this looks like a pretty good spot. Okay, got that big heavy jacket off. I just couldn't fit it in the backpack, so I wore it. Look at these spruce trees. There is awesome coverage underneath these things. And most people are too busy tailgating each other to pay attention about what's going on in the green space here. Wow, this would be a real good one. Oh my God. Holy. That would take some clearing out, but it could be a good thing in the future. All right, just gonna wander around here a little bit. Um, Imagine being Steve, you gotta get in the mind of Steve for a minute. You randomly see, it's just one tree. It's not even like a bunch of trees there where he's like getting it. No, he's talking about literally getting under that one tree and he sees that as potential for the future. <laughs> he's planning future videos. He's gonna come back one day, clear out under the tree, leave again, just in preparation for him to one day stealth camp under the one singular Christmas tree. What? Looks like a pretty good spot. Right, I'm seeing trash here already. And yeah, okay, Looks wait, like you ragged on me last time. I always forget what those trees are called. And yes, I call them all Christmas trees. Don't come for me. It's over there that weren't too stealthy. Fine, fine. I think it's, it's like they probably got told devil. to move along. And yeah. Bunch of uh bunch of cleaning supplies. So they probably cleaned up their equipment before they packed up and moved along. So, oh, this actually looks pretty decent right here. Yeah. Calling in under here. I think this is arguably a better spot than the other one. I'm going to Go grab my gear and start making my way over here and give us some more camouflage. Okay, picture it. <laughs> you have some kind of either a car breakdown feet away from where he's going to be stealth camping or, you know, God forbid there's some kind of an accident. A car goes like off the road and ends up at the trees. The cops show up, everything shows up and there's a guy sleeping in a fucking body bag <laughs> next to the accident. Oh my God. Oh my God. Maybe, you know, just considering it's a body bag this time, maybe you should have gone a little further away from like the potential of shit happening, you know? Between this spot actually and the other spot, pretty much a toss up. Except this one is real close to this lane of traffic there. And the other one's further away. So when a car comes careening off, it could squish me here. And the other one is just a little bit further away from those nice houses across the road. So we're going to make tracks for that other spot. Let's go. Look at how close the cars are. Okay. Right on. Let's uh, 
get into the cover of these woods. This is a fine spot, but it's a little exposed. So I'm gonna use this nice stuff. I have a couple different patterns. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, for the parody, I went looking online to order one of those stupid, the camo things that he like throws at things and hangs in the trees. I was gonna just throw it on the top of the tent. It was gonna be funny. Anyway, those things are like 90 bucks. I'm not throwing 90 bucks in to do a stupid video, no. I refuse. Instead, I will go out outside and find a couple of sticks on the ground, throw them on top of the tent, and that's going to be my camo. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm going to pick the one that kind of matches the spruce a little better. Let's see. Right. This is the winner. And we'll just string this up along there. Then we'll take a peek from the outside and see what it looks like. Oh my God, wait, I have a camo sweatshirt. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll throw the sweatshirt on top of the tent and two sticks and we'll call it a day. Oh, hell yeah, my step two is going to be a J and a Cub Zero. Okay, I think we've got a small break in. Oh, I was wrong. Okay, now looks like a good time. And from out here, from where the cars are going to be traveling, what do we see? Oh, that's perfect. The sun shines behind it a little bit. But we've only got an hour and a half of sunshine left. So that looks pretty good to me. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, do I know where he camps? Like, is it does he go everywhere like Everest or just like close to where he lives? Um, he does most of his camping. I've noticed most of the videos I've seen anyway are close enough to where he lives. He stays in Alberta anyway and just kind of moves around a little bit. But he has done others in other places for sure. The best thing about places like this is there's no sidewalks, no walking trails, and the traffic going by is going at freeway merging speed. So you'd really have to be curious about what's going on in the woods to pull over on a freeway on-ramp and check things out. So I think we should be in for a night of smooth sailing. So for today's shelter, I have to thank John S. for suggesting this and anybody else who's suggested it, is a body bag, um, actual medical grade, body bag you can get them off of amazon for about thirty dollars well mystery solved <laughs> you really can get everything on amazon can't you thirty dollars you get a body bag off amazon why the fuck is amazon selling body bags <laughs> really though <laughs> why is amazon selling body bags who's buying body bags from amazon Oh my God, I got to go look after. I bet the comments, you know, like the, um, the reviews, the reviews under the body bags must be hilarious. <laughs> I got to check that out after. Holy crap. The police probably they're buying Amazon body bags. Why did I assume they kind of had their own source for body bags? The Amazon serial killer, probably. I mean, <laughs> I wonder, is his Amazon shop? Oh, he, he, yeah, for sure. He's on some kind of a list somewhere. Holy crap. Sorry, I just took that question away about FFG. You don't drink. I really don't drink. Maybe like once a year, twice a year at most. I'll drink, but it's really not my thing. I prefer my weed. They're waterproof, so that's good. Um, They got a zipper, so that's even better. And uh, yeah, so tonight I'm just going to crawl into a body bag and that should provide me all the shelter I need from the elements. Perfect. Just smells like a tarp. It doesn't have any gross medical smell to it. 
Um, tells me it's new. Good. Okay, okay. I'm not trying to alarm anybody. I'm just going to say that I've just gone over to the Amazon.ca and clicked onto the body bag, the first body bag that I found. And uh, what's alarming to me is that the first thing that popped up is like, Act now, there's only five left in stock. Oh my god, who's buying these? Why is there only five left in stock? The fuck is going on, Steve? Steve, how many body bags did you buy, and why? It might be a little cold tonight, so I got this sleeping bag liner. Uh, always a good thing to have. It'll add a couple of degrees warmth to this paper thin sleeping bag it is really soft here on all these spruce needles but I am going to use the sleeping pad for added insulation value okay no no uh, uh, no 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 wait wait I'm not even listening to Steve anymore let me tell you what's going on on this slide here. <laughs> so, yeah, I've gone to Amazon. I've clicked on the first body bag. I scrolled down to the comments. There was only one comment, some guy using it as a bivy bag. That I think that's something to do with camping. Anyway, whatever, whatever. So I go and click on the second body bag. Um, <laughs> like available, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I can show you. Let, let me, I can... <laughs> Actually, I don't know if I can show this on the internet. You know what? No, I don't know if I can. I really don't know the rules of this website. I know this wouldn't fly on YouTube. So let me just assume it's not. They have a, like a cadaver doll in the body bag in a photo. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is so fucked wait let me put the link i'm gonna put the link in the chat you guys all go there so we can be uh freaking out a little bit together hold on <laughs> okay everybody go here wait a oh, crap oh, why is life so difficult here okay here here here's the link oh my god oh my god oh my god Click on that and meet me in the comments and like on your scroll down, stop by the picture. Oh, good Lord. Oh, good Lord. Where it says like from the manufacturer, <laughs> body bag, stretcher combo, keep scrolling down and you're going to get to a picture of a doll. Oh my God. No, why? <laughs> why would they put that picture? No, 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 no. Oh no. <laughs> Why would they do that? Oh my God. Okay. Ugh, the comments. My friends and I are twisted. We stuffed a friend in this body bag for Halloween and covered her in whipped cream. Did not leak. Still smells like dairy, but hey, was perfect for our needs. Now to bury her in the, my front yard for fun. What? Oh my God. Good material and stitching. Thankfully, haven't had to use it. Oh, no. No! <laughs> I, was, I was driving with a body in my trunk when I was pulled over for whatever reason. The officer asked what was in the bag. I said camping supplies, but he said it's clearly a body in the bag and I was taken into custody. Currently out on bail, but yeah, would not recommend... And it was given a one star review. No. Oh my God. Oh no. This is so fucked. Oh my God. Wait, another person gives a one star review. The description shows 12 bags, not one. Please send the remainder ASAP. We, ASAP. We have only received one bag. What the fuck did you need 12 for? Oh my God. Okay, well, that was a really interesting sidebar. Who knew you could buy body bags on Amazon? 
You learn something new every day, huh? Thanks, Steve. I originally thought that little automatic inflator was gimmicky and unnecessary, but after six inflations, it's still on those AAA batteries. And I have to say, I'm impressed. I always like tucking the sleeping pad into the sleeping bag. That way it doesn't twist around sideways on me, etc. Oh God, Bambi, I'm scared to go and look. Gasket reviews on Amazon are wild. We might have to do a whole stream about this. This has opened a whole new world of like gruesome to me. We may have to come back to this. Put, put a little reminder on this one. Mm? We'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be Halloween camping without a mummy bag. I'll see myself out. Get the mummy bag and the body bag. And. that calls for a step too got this uh well sitting on a body bag to drink your beer step two time step, step one set up the body bag step two get fucked up on the body bag it'll be blood orange yeah i'm not good at halloween stuff but i'm sure good at uh enjoying a step two mm -hmm. Delish. Low alcohol too, uh three and a half percent. Cause uh I'm on a diet. Twilight is just beginning, so with the change in lighting, I'll take another peek from the outside and then we're gonna get some dinner started because this will take a few hours at least. Well, well, well. Yep. That's just fine in my opinion. Spooky Halloween themed foods are tricky. Most of the recipes just seem to be decorating normal food as something spooky. Um, the only one that I really wanted to eat that was suggested, um, the best they could do is a pun and it's goulash, I know. Um, so when I was out, I picked up this pot, believe it or not. Um, it's the seed of He's going to start making goulash in the middle of a desert, a desert. What? Like under a tree What desert. What's the matter with my brain? I, uh, part of the thing I find so funny about Steve is that he used to get criticized about the things that he would cook on these like stealth camping missions. So without even really addressing the fact that people were giving him like hell about what he was cooking, he just really leaned into like making things even somewhat more complicated. Somebody had said something once about, I can't believe you're uh, sitting there chopping an onion. And then in the next video he made, he was chopping the ingredients for an entire salad. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Everything started getting more and more complicated. And stuff. And and that's that's that dry sense of humor. I think it's funny. He's really funny to me. Yeah, it's like petty in a dry way. The Summit X pot. Um, and it pops into pot like so so i couldn't pass it up because of its stealthy implications however i didn't realize you can't fry in it or saute or anything it's strictly a boiling thing that doesn't work with browning beef so fortunately i had a little tiny thing that i can brown up some beef then we'll just dump it all in and boil it for hours that's uh the way it goes I had to bring my somewhat larger burner because this actually simmers appropriately. That rocket stove on the spaghetti did a number on the bottom of that pan. I'll tell you that. This one should be able to uh, maintain a little more reasonable simmer. Unfortunately, I know this road noise is pretty annoying. 
there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm trying to time the shots in between the traffic and stay as close to the mic as I can here. But uh, that'll subside here in an hour or so when the good people of the world are back with their families cooking their own goulash. Perfect. I even got a lighter. Okay. Doesn't sound like a simmer. Oh, yeah. That's going to do quite okay. I always laugh at his cooking. Every single time it makes me laugh. Even though, like, the pack of beef, everything's, it's just a little too ridiculous. Not only for camping are these re uh, recipes ridiculous, but the fact that, like, for example, right now, don't forget, he's, he's like, huddled under a tree, feet away from, like, a freeway. You know, it's just so insane. Making goulash like it's nothing. You see his little bag of bread behind him. He took a little butter out of a thing to, like, cook up his beef. It's ridiculous. Small batches to get them nice and browned. I found this recipe online, and it's an instant pot recipe, but it also had stovetop instructions. I totally agree. It's, it's like night and day, Stevie and Evie, right? But I love them both equally also. Um, not to shit on Evie at all, but there's something maybe I think I like more about Steve because he's just so fucking real. You know what I mean? <laughs> and this takes balls. I don't care. You're just randomly sitting under a tree, browning your beef in the, in small bits at a time. You know what I mean? It, this is insane. I love it. The instant pot ones said, uh, put it on saute or something, brown the beef, saute the veggies, then dump in all the rest of the stuff push the button and wait for a few hours. I could probably do a reasonable facsimile here. Mm, smells good. Just got the last little bit of beef ground up here. And I'll deglaze the pan here with some concentrated beef broth and a little water. I like the concentrated stuff because that gives me the option, if I don't use all of it, to use it on a later meal. And pretty much then it's a boil fest for the rest of the night. Doing the one pot boogie. Well, two pots. Pan in a pot. It smells really good. Okay. And uh, first spill of the evening. We're not going to push our luck any further into the main pot and let's there we go that worked out good no yeah it's, it's just <laughs> the ridiculousness of it deglazing his pot under the tree next to exactly next to the highway you know how could you not love steve this is ridiculous let's start boiling up a bunch of stuff pull out the spruce needles veggies are okay so Mix of bell peppers. That looks to be a whole sweet Vidalia onion. That's okay. It's going to be a veggie laden. Uh... Oh, that's okay. Paprika. Can't go wrong with paprika. Smoked paprika. Had to buy it just for this occasion, so it's not even opened yet. Smoked paprika. Smoked paprika under a tree, feet away from a freeway. Smoked paprika. Wow. Mm, smoky. Right on. Okay. This is like the main part of the stew, so it looks like I'm really abusing the dish with the paprika, but it's not the case. It relies abuse the on this dish, Steve. Abuse it. What's paprika anyway? Isn't paprika only ground up red peppers? You can't really kill anything with paprika, let's be real. Yeah, you know, tomato paste, although it looks like toothpaste, it's the perfect thing for camping. It's a little tomato paste. Ditto with the garlic. Salt and pepper we'll tweak later. Uh, Marvin, FFG, do they have guys with smokers selling barbecue ribs at gas stations in Canada? I've never seen that before in my life or heard of it, but my God, would they ever make a fortune if they did? 
What the hell? <laughs> I wish they did. They don't. For the most part, that's about it. Uh, it does want some flour, so give it what it wants. And in goes the rest of this. Off. Concentrate. And the flour probably should have been done as a roux with the vegetables or... Okay, okay. What, however, I can buy pupusas out of the back of a minivan in my neighborhood. I don't know if you can do that. That's sort of a thing here. But they're like, it's like, they can't just be out in the open with that shit here, you know? Whatever the case is, but it's camping, right? Not gourmet chef of the day here. Bring to a boil, cover and simmer, and then we'll uh, adjust the recipe as, as taste dictates. All the hard work is done, and she's simmering. It's going to be great. It smells fantastic already. Across the main freeway there, there is a house with its lights on and a clear view of me. I didn't expect that side to be exposed, so I'm just going to have to be careful. I don't think I have another camo tarp with me. Okay, maybe I'm crazy, but if I had just one camo tarp and I was either going to block off the fast moving freeway or the one house with a window looking directly at me, I would be more worried about the house. The people driving by don't necessarily give a fuck that even if there is a guy chilling in the trees, the people at that house are going to be concerned because they live there and there's some freak outside <laughs> making a fucking pot of food under a tree. They're the ones you need to worry about. You need to move the tarp, Steve. Come on. You see like, like smoke coming out of the tree and you're like, what the fuck? So you go outside and what am I smell? Do I smell beef? And you go closer to the tree and there's just a lunatic with a camera and a pot of food hiding under the tree. The goulash is simmering nicely and it's a little darker so we can kind of walk around here. There's uh, the main freeway right here behind me. Oh, uh, Lucky Lola, I doubt it for real. Oh, Steve is, Steve's channel is huge, like millions, not like not to shit on Evie by any means, but Evie's channel is just like moving up now. You know what I mean? He's like about to hit a hundred thousand and it came very quickly. It's different. Like he's new to YouTube. Like I would imagine people tend to watch more about them or search themselves more and stuff when they're new. Plus, Evie is younger. He's more like into the online and stuff. Steve doesn't really strike me like the type to spend too much time online besides his own thing. You know, uh, I really doubt it. And this is the slip lane for the folks that want to get on the freeway going that way. And over here, there's the... Uh... Wait, 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 wait. Evie's a gamer? What does he play? I was like, what does he do? What does he play? Oh my God. What kind of games is he into? Is it like shooting games? Or is it like Animal Farm? Animal Farm, is that what? Animal Crossing? I forget what the fuck that game y'all are obsessed with. What's his, what's his type of game? Animal Crossing Animal Farm. <laughs> I'm so old. Okay. <laughs> shut up. Everybody shut up. Uh, okay. What's he more into? Like, is it the shooting games? Or are they more like the animals and cutesy poo? Animal Crossing on a farm. <laughs> no, I will not play it. Listen, when I want to play, when I want to game, I game one thing and one thing alone. And it's Super Mario Brothers 3. There's never going to be a game that good. There has never been a game that good. I don't care. Fight me all day. There will never be a game that good. We are the animal farm. <laughs> I called it animal farm. Such a 
fucking idiot. Yes, P poison pussy for I'm old. <laughs> Oh my God, the ads are playing? Okay. Oh. Imagine if Evie gains with salad. No, no, I don't even want those worlds to collide. Evie doesn't need all that in his life. You play Mario Kart too? That's true. I do. I played Mario Kart mostly because we could all play together. But if it's like, if it's just like, you know, I suddenly get the urge to play a game, I'm only playing Mario 3. I could just play that game for the rest of my life. <laughs> FFG, you still, wait. You still have to beat her at Mario Kart? She doesn't have a Switch anymore. She can't even play Mario Kart anymore. Wah, wah. Wait, man, I have YouTube premium. I do not miss the ads. <laughs> FFG, love for you to play Mario Kart again. You know, we haven't played in like, I don't know, 13, 14 months or something. I haven't even taken the Switch out of the drawer in like 13 months. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what it is with me. I go so hot and then so cold on things. I'm like a zero or a hundred, nothing in between. Always have been, always will be. It's it's a flaw, really. But I got so fucking into that game when we were all still in lockdown. I got the Switch. We were playing together. We played, we played, we played. And then when they ended the lockdown, I it's like I associated the Switch to being locked in my home and I just don't even want to touch it anymore. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> overpass thingy there for the folks that want to go that way down the freeway and yeah there's a lot of junk out here look at this hmm. see irresponsible stealth campers you can't just leave that stuff behind the dinner is still simmering away and there are a ton of invasive streetlights around here. As right behind me over here, there. Yeah, I, listen, I'm the same when it comes to food, when it comes to music, when I get everything in my life, even a drink. Sometimes, you know, like when I had my obsession with the Coke Zero Cherry and it was like every single day. And then I just don't want them at all anymore. Hot and cold. It's like 100 or zero. And I always fucking do that. And I, I don't know why it really bothers me about myself, but I'm I can't stop. I always say I have to kill things. <laughs> I can't just like do things. I have to do it until I kill it and I don't even want it anymore and it's over. It's dead to me, you know? There's uh, that one there. There's all these over here. And I kind of think it's okay for me to turn on a small flashlight so I can see what I'm doing because it shouldn't stand out with all these uh, street lights. Goulash. It's a meal that takes an awful lot of time uh, to cook. So probably not your best meal to cook when you're stealth camping. All right, we're going to head on over to that grove of trees and check things out. Oops. I don't even know. The body bag um yeah it's okay doesn't this look like he's now been caught by the cops and they're like interrogating him and that's what that like bright ass thing is like a flashlight or something and they just got this lunatic hiding under a tree with a body bag and a, a camo like tarp thing <laughs> i don't like this one i don't know the body bag makes it extra sick or something and these videos are sick enough without body bags Got uh, three handles on each side. And then it looks like uh, one in the front, probably one on the back. The zipper, uh, there's two zippers and it opens the whole thing up. So I'm hunkered down inside of here. Uh, the thing is waterproof, uh, chemical proof. Of course, it's waterproof. Uh, oh my God. It's kind of its job. But uh, does anyone else like have the creeps right now? I have goosebumps. I feel like creepy. And I'm thinking in my mind how much money you'd have to pay me for me to get into that body bag and sleep the night in it. Ooh, it would be a lot. It's morbid as it is. 
this is a pretty cool uh, baby sack alternative. It actually packs up pretty quick and pretty small in the backpack. So, um, potty bag. Well, this cooked down pretty good. I could have boiled it down a little more, I think, but that's pretty good. Um, might not look that good, but it sure does taste good. So I got these uh, fresh baked tray buns, and we're going to... Yes, I would do it for a price. I have a price. It's like my mother's sister said to me once when she almost got pummeled by me. Everybody's a whore sometimes, Anne-Marie. Listen, I got my price too to Charmouth, okay? I will Charmouth my sleeping in a body bag. I just, I don't know the price yet, but it exists. Hmm? Scoop some of this into there. And, of course, I have to give a huge shout out to the beer donation folks um and i wish you were here with us right now mm, cracking delicious step two mm. ah yes i refer to my mom my mom has two sisters and i refer to them both as my mother's sisters because i can't stand either one of them and i don't consider them my aunts so they're my mother's sisters when i say <laughs> i have five aunts on my dad's side five I call them my aunts. My mother has two sisters. It's not the same. Oh my, I'm just spilling chunks of beef all over myself. But uh, yeah, for all the folks that uh, have donated, thank you so, so much. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I, uh. With his fucking goulash and his bread under the tree. Like, now that he's eating it, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Okay, it's dark now. It's a, but it was daylight. He's fucking simmering a pot for what seems like hours. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, FFG, if your channel got really big, would you quit your job? Never over my dead body would I ever quit my job for YouTube. No matter how big any channel ever got, for example. Channel can be gone. You like you blink, it's gone. You wake up tomorrow, it's gone. There's nothing guaranteed at all, no matter how big a channel gets. It, it's big in the moment. You have fuck all tomorrow. You know what I'll always have tomorrow? My job. I probably shouldn't have cooked it so much without stirring it because it's a little bit burned, but it's certainly delicious. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, it's time to crawl into the mummy bag. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> New here, is he homeless or is this a hobby? Hey, <laughs> he's not homeless. He's just insane a little bit in a funny way. He's one of those funny crazies though. Um, and he goes on crazy stealth camping like missions in random spots. Then also zip myself up in the body bag. It feels warmer already. Fine. Oh my god, look at this. No, no zipper on the inside. Oh my god, so no. I won't zip it all the way up. Okay, Tweety, Tweety, wait a minute. What's your price, bitch? Think about it. What if before you had to zip yourself up in the body bag, they gave you uh, a nice rosé, a bon petit steak, bien cuit, à ton goût, ah, ah? 
a little rosé, a little steak for Tweety. Maybe they just slip you a uh, hundred thousand euro. Maybe would you zip yourself up then, girl? I would dive head first into that fucking body bag for that. <laughs> right on this body bag is cozy um i'm not zipping it all the way up for all you see bam and tweety just set her price because in the words of my mother's sister everybody's a whore sometimes that ah, tweety welcome to charmouth life obvious reasons but uh not quite tired yet so i'm gonna tell you a story um i don't get scared a lot you um, did. i'm scared of security guards and police and bears and heights and that's about it but i was camping once in my motorhome and i pulled down to the bottom of this dam um on vancouver island and i camped for the night i it started a huge fire it was gigantic and uh i figured that would scare off any animals and the thing was like six feet high and i'd end up going back into the rv and watching some shows and then smack on the side of the motor home and there was nothing around there's no trees you know i thought maybe you know uh an owl or something had dive bombed it which i've had before but i turned on my flashlight and went outside and i looked around and uh there was nothing out there so i went back in i actually stoked the fire again just to be sure that uh, it was a big powerful fire and yeah another 15 minutes later bang like it sounded like somebody's human fist smacking the side of the motorhome. And um, I didn't go out that time to look. I just kind of went to bed and said, I'm getting out of here in the morning. How do you just go back to sleep after that? Oh my God, I understand not going outside. I'd be scared to go outside too, but that's where, that's where you grab the bat. <laughs> and you, you just stay there awake and alert all night long, freaked out as fuck, clenching your bat. No? Is that not normal behavior? That's what I would do. He's just like, you know what? I'm just going to go to sleep. We'll leave in the morning. The fuck are you talking about? Why don't you leave now? <laughs> Fell asleep with a roaring fire, like camping, you know? And like you go to sleep as it burns, keeps the animals away. Oh. Although if you're in a motorhome, what are you really keeping the animals away? I don't know enough about camping. Point is... This is his body bag equivalent of like a, ho a horror or like a, a ghost story. Oh, my God. No. And when I went to leave in the morning, there was a fresh skiff of snow on the ground. And I couldn't see any footprints, but I could see depressions like where the snow had settled over what would have been possibly footprints. But there was nothing anywhere near so the best i could figure was it was some disgruntled old mountain man um coming down that didn't like me camping in the in that campground or um yet to be determined creature um i did google the the place i was and uh one of the first things that came up was a Sasquatch sighting in the area, but I'm a skeptic. Um, so I don't know, but do you believe in Sasquatch? Do you believe in Bigfoot? I don't know. <laughs> Is it maybe a bear? Maybe. Could it be something else? Yes. You believe in that shit? Okay. Okay. You think there's a Sasquatch? <laughs> okay. 
I'm not shitting on it. I believe in like all kinds of things. Hey, you believe, believe bees and let bees believe and let believe, you know? Four of you saw the Sasquatch? All right. What's more scary, rando, psycho, human, or mythical creature? Rando, psycho, human. <laughs> I'm more terrified that there's like a killer on the loose coming to like peep in your windows as you sleep. That's way more scary to me. I don't know. Do you guys believe in aliens? I do. I kind of do. I think it's egotistical to assume that we're the only ones, the only beings. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's some stuff you just can't explain. And cats exist. And they're just so far from the like realm of normal that they have to be connected to some aliens. I don't know. I believe that fully. I got right out of there and I don't plan to go back to, uh, I think that was uh, the uh, Strathcona Dam, perhaps on Vancouver Island. But all right, let's zip this up and get to bed. None of this scary stuff for tonight. Ah, good morning. It's about 6.20 a.m. And uh, believe it or not, the sun's not going to rise for another couple of hours. And it's freezing cold. So I'm going to start packing things up and get out of here before the morning rush hour starts and before this uh, condensation in the body bag gets any worse. I'll explain about that in a moment. Condensation in the body bag? No. No. Like, it's good for him that he doesn't fake his videos. I would be out of that fucking body bag. Ugh. At least sleep with it unzipped. I don't know. I don't know condensation in the body bag everything he says from that body bag just creeps me the fuck out did he pee no i'm guessing it's from his breathing maybe sweating i, I don't know oh it's chilly okay so the deal is body bags don't breathe because Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Booty fang. I did say cats. C-A-T-S. Meow. Cats are fucking aliens or sent by aliens. There's, Come on. Listen, even cat people, you have to admit, they are fucking weird. Like, fucking weird. Dogs exist. Other animals exist. And then there's cats. And cats are on, like, their whole, like, uh, I don't know. They just don't belong. You know, one of these things that doesn't belong, it's the cats. And they're sent by the aliens. <laughs> it has to be. Look at the way they behave and look at the shapes of their heads. Aliens. Boom. Aliens. It's the only explanation. They, that's sort of like why they have no respect for us and they don't listen to people and shit. They're just like roaming the earth looking for like, like information or something. And they're sending it back somewhere. Cats are the link. Hmm? What do you think? The Sphinx is a thing and shit. They were letting us know without letting us know. The cats are the masters here, and it's because they're sent by the aliens. Think about it. Because it would be absolutely, totally, completely disgusting if they did. Now, I figured that the amount of perspiration coming off of me wouldn't be a big deal. Oh, very wrong. Um, this sleeping bag is, like, saturated. Look at that. Because it is... Okay. Oh, ooh, it's saturated. That's so disgusting. <laughs> I don't want to hear about a saturated fucking body bag. The ads are running. So let's go back to the cat thing. I see a bunch of you in the chat going, how high are you, Frenchie? You must be high today, Frenchie. I am, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, high or not, Think, of, just think about it. Just, just open your minds a little. Cats, cats are not from this earth. Mm -mm. Dogs are. Yeah ducks shit like that you know what i mean yeah cats no 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 no, no. <laughs> i'm trying to leave baby j stories out of it but i'm gonna say one little quick bbj thing because it just proved that she was an alien okay so the other day bbj th there was something with bbj's chest and they had to cut the fur on bbj's chest okay like a mat deep deep in the chest fur whatever so 
they were scratching her <laughs> where the mat was and she got so fucking into it. She was loving it, licking like the hand and arm and everything. And then it's like she went fucking berserk. Her head shook and she bit <laughs> out of nowhere. Just a fucking sudden bite. She, the, the wires in the brain or something. I don't know. The aliens did something a little wrong. And, and there was some connection there from the chest to the brain. And it created some kind of a short circuit. And the cat went fucking haywire and out of nowhere bit. And, and uh, listen, aliens, that's the proof. Boom. Right around freezing. So 32 Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. And as soon as any of that perspiration hit the cold outside of this body bag, yeah, it actually is a lot worse than nothing at all. So, Listen, listen, I know. Okay, my brother really knows about cats. Okay, he's the cat lover, okay? The ca my brother was all like, oh, like that was so sweet. Like she got so like, like into it. It's like an overstimulation thing. And it's like she got too excited. And really enjoyed it and it was the the feeling of that mat no longer being there and you know the the fur not pulling and and the relief of having someone scratch that spot she just got so damn into it it's like she didn't know how to behave and so she bit you know what i mean but to me i was like uh-huh uh-huh i'm hearing that story and like looking with like side eye like mm, alien i haywire i see i'm gonna uh start packing this stuff up get out of here as quickly as i can Oh God, you've hit the second trigger of animals to me. Okay. I can take a bird, like one bird. Okay. Oh, and now there's two birds. And now I feel like I got to keep an eye on the birds. If all the birds assembled, you know how, like when they sit on like a line all together, like a power line or whatever, or phone, I don't know what the fuck those wine lines are, but sometimes you're walking down a street, let's say you look up and there's like the wires and you see like the whole wire and it's just fucking birds all sitting there in a row. It shows how well they can organize. You've seen the flying V. It shows how well they can organize. There are so many fucking birds on this planet. If those motherfuckers all got it together and got in cahoots, we would be screwed. They could peck every human being to death in like an hour. It would be done for us. The birds own the planet now. You got to watch out for the birds. Any more than two together, watch watch them. You don't take your eye off those birds. They're plotting something. Hmm? <laughs> Awesome. All cleaned up and we are out of here. Oh, wow. There was a frost last night. This grass is crispy. But like my mom always said, don't use a body bag when you're stealth camping or the condensation will become a problem for you. It's an old family saying we had. So I'm just going to sneak across this slip lane back to the car. And I think it's time to get something hot to drink. Yeah, that dry humor, he just slipped that in like like it wasn't even a joke, you know what I mean? Never fall asleep with the body bag zipped up, it's an old family joke or whatever. Looks good. Let's roll. Just the uh, Red Phoenix, it's called Triple Burger, and it's spectacular. <laughs> All right, the official reading is minus three degrees Celsius, or around 26 Fahrenheit. So that explains the coldness. Um, and yeah, I didn't bring my big, powerful sleeping bag because it has lofted for so long that I couldn't even fit it in my backpack. I need a compression bag to squish that right back down. But time for a tea, I do believe. And Monopoly's still on, so you know what that means. All right.
Hi, I want to know what's going to get free today. Oh, hey, uh, could I get uh, an extra large green tea? Extra large green tea? Yeah. How do you take it? Um, just as it is. Just flat, okay? <laughs> just as it is. <laughs> I'm trying to get his voice down the way he says extra large. Large. It's that like extra Canadian way of saying it, eh? I need an extra large green tea. I've never seen him take a green tea. So it's coffee. Wow. The body bag changed him. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Excellent note, please. Thank Thanks. you. So I had to make the decision. Do I try and just power through it until the sun comes up? Yes. Or do I get a bright and early start to the day? And uh, yeah, so here we are, oh, right and early. Wow, I think this is the first time I've ever seen Steve like cop out of one of his stealth missions ever. I wonder if it was really the humidity or he got freaked the fuck out himself being in the body bag. He like weirded himself out in the night or something.